Bionicle has always been a story of good versus evil, a battle between the forces of light and dark, a struggle between heroes and villains, a chronicle of the Toa's journey to defeat Makuta and reawaken Mata Nui. From the beginning, this has been the genesis of Bionicle's narrative, but as we know well by now, there exists a diverse and complex universe beyond the Toa's struggle, where the lines between good and evil are not so clear. Case in point, the Dark Hunters. While this collection of mercs, killers, and bounty hunters were often depicted as villains, they're an example of how Bionicle's story has become more varied and nuanced over time. Throughout this past month, we've learned about some of the members of this faction, but now it's time to zoom out and take a look at the Dark Hunters as a whole. Hey everyone, this is Pilot and welcome back finally to another episode of Bionicle Lore Explained. Been a while, hasn't it? I apologize for such a long wait between episodes. I've just been sidetracked lately with my 1k special in school, but hopefully now we can get back into the swing of things. Before we get started, I'd like to announce that a new mock contest has just started over on my Discord server. Keeping with the topic of this video, the theme of the contest is Dark Hunters. As such, you'll be tasked with creating your own original Dark Hunter or a revamp of an existing one. More details can be found in the contest submission channel of the Discord, which you can join using the link in the description below. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, then please consider giving it a like and subscribing to this channel. And not only post lore videos such as this, but you can also find mock showcases and other content related to Bionicle. Now without further ado, let us begin the story of the Dark Hunters. Thank you to Biosector01 for its help in producing these videos. Biosector01 is by far the largest and most accurate Bionicle wiki out there, and has been a massive help in researching and gathering information for these videos. This simply would not be possible without the hard work of the Bionicle community, so thank you. The story of the Dark Hunters begins with a being known as Ancient. Ancient was a member of an unknown species who hailed from a desolate island ravaged by harsh winter storms. Equally harsh, however, was the strict code of conduct that governed the island's inhabitants, a code that Ancient sought to abolish entirely. Going against the societal norms of his homeland, Ancient began offering his services as a mercenary, and a damn good one at that. So much so that Ancient single-handedly destabilized the society on the island, as warlords began competing against each other for Ancient and his services. Later into this civil war, Ancient would encounter the being we know as the Shadowed One, a fellow member of Ancient Species and the future leader of the Dark Hunters. Ancient's exploits had shown the Shadowed One that bounty hunting was an extremely lucrative market, inspiring him to start a business of his own. Together, Ancient and the Shadowed One would leave their desolate homeland behind and journey to the island of Odina. There, they would drive out the island's original inhabitants and take control of Odina for themselves, the first in a long conquest of stealing, killing, and other despicable acts committed by the Dark Hunters. In the years that followed, the Dark Hunters would only grow in size and notoriety, recruiting new members to their cause and establishing relations with other factions within the Matoran universe. Chief among these was the Brotherhood of Makuta, who offered augmentations, raw heat, and weapons to the Dark Hunters in exchange for their services. Going forward, the Dark Hunters and the Brotherhood will share a close relationship. However, as we'll see later on, that relationship will not last forever. As the Dark Hunters acquired greater standing within the Matoran universe, the Shadow One's ambition only grew. He no longer viewed his organization as merely a business, but rather a means of conquering and ruling the Matoran universe. In the eyes of the Shadowed One, the greatest prize of all would be the island city of Metru Nui, a metropolis that, in essence, served as the capital of the Matoran universe. The Shadowed One would unleash many threats upon the city in an effort to take control of it. The first of these attempts would be freeing a powerful Rahi called the Kanoe Dragon to do damage to the city. However, this attack would be thwarted by a Toa team known as the Toa Mangai. Later, the Shadowed One would also attempt to kidnap Taraka Duma, the leader of Metru Nui, a plan that wound up failing just like all the others. The Shadowed One's failures would only make him more obsessed with the city, however. Opting to take a more direct approach, the Shadowed One would declare war on Metru Nui, thus beginning the Toa Dark Hunter War. In time, Dark Hunters would begin invading the city in mass, instilling fear within the hearts of the Matoran and overwhelming the Toa left to defend the city. While the vast majority of the Toa had taken refuge within the Colosseum at the center of Metru Nui, one had managed to escape amidst the invasion. Naho, a Toa of Water member of the Toa Mangai, would venture outside of Metru Nui to gather reinforcements for the Toa. By the time she returned, Naho had gathered an army of a hundred Toa to her aid. While they experienced many losses, the Toa would eventually drive the Dark Hunters out of Metru Nui. Before that, however, Toa Lakan, leader of the Toa Mangai, would strike a deal with the Dark Hunter Hakan. Hakan would give Lakan an artifact known as the Makoki Stone to allow the Dark Hunters a peaceful exit from the city. However, contrary to what you might believe, this was all part of a bigger plan. Nidiki, another member of the Toa Mangai, would be approached by a Dark Hunter named Lariska with an offer of her own. If Nidiki aided the Dark Hunters in luring the Toa into an ambush, he would be rewarded with control over Metru Nui. Nidiki accepted, and the next day he led the Toa into the canyon of unending whispers in Po Metru, knowing full well that his fellow Toa were about to be attacked. The Lakan, still wary of the Dark Hunters, came prepared with an army of 300 Toa that arrived to counter the ambush. Despite Nadiki's betrayal, the Toa would be victorious. Akan banished the Dark Hunters and his former brother Nadiki from Metru Nui, and the Toa Dark Hunter War finally came to a close.
Now we arrive at the part of the story I'm sure most of you are familiar with, as this was our first introduction to the Dark Hunters all the way back in 2004. The iconic duo of Nadiki and Kreka, along with another Dark Hunter named Eliminator, would all be sent to Metro Nui at the behest of Makuta Teradax. Their task? Eliminate the city's protectors and find all six of the Great Kanoka Discs. From there the story plays out the way you remember. Teradax impersonates Turagaduma, Lakan forms the Toa Metru, so on and so forth. The part that's relevant to this story, however, is when Teradax betrays Nadiki and Kreka by absorbing them using a shadow hand. I mentioned before how the Dark Hunters and the Makuta once shared a close relationship, but this would become the catalyst for them to turn against each other. After the Great Cataclysm, the Shadow One would journey to Metro Nui alongside two of his servants in search of Nadiki and Kreka. While he initially thought to have a Akama responsible for the deaths of his operatives, the Shadow One would soon learn the truth of Teradax's betrayal, ultimately declaring war on the Brotherhood of Makuta. Despite them being heavily outmatched against the Makuta, the Dark Hunters still held their own, utilizing hit-and-run tactics to quickly attack the Makuta before slipping away. While this was a functional strategy, the Dark Hunters were seen as little more than a distraction by the Makuta. After all, they had bigger, more ambitious things to attend to, and this measly mercenary guild couldn't do much to interfere with the Brotherhood's plans. That was until another faction entered the fight. The Order of Madanui was a secretive organization dedicated to preserving and enacting the will of the Great Spirit Madanui. As such, the Order was in direct opposition of the Brotherhood of Makuta, and declared war to prevent them from conquering the Matorn universe. Ancient came to the Shadow One with the idea of allying with the Order. This was due to Ancient actually being a double agent. While he had been an operative for the Dark Hunters, he had also been serving the Order of Mata Nui in secret. Ancient had put himself at risk by proposing this idea, but thankfully the Shadow One approved due to the shared goals of both factions. Together, the Dark Hunters and the Order of Mata Nui would work to defeat the Makuta. However, their alliance, while effective, was rather unstable. On one particular occasion, the Dark Hunters had been sent to the island of Zia to prevent the Vortex from supplying weapons to the Brotherhood. The Shadow One had planned to completely annihilate the island and its inhabitants. That was until Helrix, leader of the Order, showed up to remind him of his task. Helrix's order had been to occupy the island, not destroy it. And if the Shadow One refused to comply, Helrix threatened to destroy his entire fleet in an instant. Even with these hiccups, however, their alliance would remain throughout the last battles of the war. With the Brotherhood's final defeat at Metro Nui and the reawakening of the Great Spirit Mata Nui, the Dark Hunters and the Order of Mata Nui would be victorious. Though, despite their victory, the fight against the Makuta would not end here. And with that, we have concluded the story of the Dark Hunters. If you ask me, the Dark Hunters really added a lot to Bionicle's story. Before, we only really knew the conflict between the Toa and Makuta, but when the Dark Hunters were introduced in 2004, we were exposed to a completely new side of the Bionicle universe. No longer was Bionicle exclusively a story of the Toa's journey to reawaken Mata Nui, but now a fully-fledged universe with factions all vying for control of it. It's for this reason that I view the Dark Hunters as one of the best additions to Bionicle's story. While the Toa and Makuta were great as heroes and villains, it's groups like the Dark Hunters that offered more nuance and complexity to Bionicle's story, making the Bionicle universe an overall more interesting place for us fans to get immersed in. To close out this episode of Bonaclore Explained, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on the Dark Hunters. Do you have a favorite member? Any thoughts on their story or role within the Bonacle universe? Either way, I'm interested to see your thoughts and opinions about the Dark Hunters, so feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. And remember that I also have the new Dark Hunters contest that's happening on my Discord server. Again, for those who are interested in joining, you can do so using the link in the description below. Thank you for watching this episode of Bonaclore Explained, and this is Pilot, signing off.